What's going on, guys? It's your boy, Kenny. We're back again with another Conversations with Kenny. And this time, I finally get to sit down with Janai Kai. I've been trying to get a hold of her for so long. If you guys don't know who Janai Kai is, she is taking the wrestling scene by storm where her vicious kicks. Anytime she's in the ring, I feel so sorry for the opponents that she's uh, she's facing against. If you guys looked at the top PWI 150 of the women's talent, she was number 115, but at at the rate that she's going right now, I, I'm sure I think she's going to hit top three or at least number one um, next year. So, guys, let's give it up for Janai Kai one time for us. What's going on? How are you, Janai? Hey, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I know my schedule's busy, but, yeah, I made sure that I could make it today at least. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen, being busy is a good thing. When you're not busy, that's when we start to worry. we wondering, like, what's going on yeah. or, like, when's the next event going to happen? But it, it's, it's good to be busy. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so, like I said before, when we was all fair, you know, I, I like to have a lot of the listeners who are not familiar with uh, with indie wrestling to get to know a lot of the like the stars that are are coming up through the ranks that they maybe will see on, you know, AEW Dark Elevation or, you know, they make their way to like Dynamite or Rampage. So for a lot of people who don't know who Janai Kai is, in your own words, who are you? Okay, well, Janai Kai, I am a martial artist. Um, my background is in Taekwondo. I have a black belt in Taekwondo, and I also have a background in Muay Thai and kickboxing. So I'm basically a stand-up striker uh, person in the ring. And so when you see me in the ring, expect a lot of kicks. I am the kick demon. So just off that name, expect a lot, <laughs> a lot of kicks. And um, I also am very sneaky, very quick very precise with my striking. Um, I like to call myself very disciplined, but I'm very determined as well. And I'm very motivated when I'm in the ring. Now, when I was doing my homework on you, one of the things that I seen that you, you study martial arts when you were really young, yeah. right? So what was like the, why the switch from wrestling, from martial arts to wrestling? Um, well, I always wanted to do wrestling, actually. Mm -hmm. um, I knew for sure I wanted to when I was 13. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I started martial arts when I was six years old. And I was watching wrestling, you know, since then. And then I don't know what it was that triggered me to actually w make the decision to be like, okay, I want to do wrestling. Um, but it's just something about the vibe that I saw in the ring, especially with the woman. Mm -hmm. Um, I really pictured how I can implement like my martial arts background in the ring. And I thought hmm, maybe, maybe this can be something that could work if anything. And when I was doing martial arts, one of my goals was to do stunt work, mm -hmm. like, do uh, martial arts movies and do like the fight scenes and all of that. And I thought, you know, wrestling could be something like that for me. Like mm -hmm. kind of be like stunt work, kind of like a fight scene in a sense. And so that's kind of how I was thinking to get into it. So again, when I was 13, I was like, okay, I want to do it. I told my mom, she actually took me to a wrestling school when I was 13. Oh, wow. Just to like get a good taste of it already so that I can know for sure. Mm -hmm. And right off the bat, I liked it. And I spoke to the... um the owner of the school and he was just mm -hmm. talking to me because you know i was 13 years old so it was kind of like kind of iffy if i could get in the ring or not and my mom right. was, she was definitely supportive um but after that meeting there um i didn't start training it was just you know just to get a good taste of everything and i didn't start training until i graduated high school like after that um, so that's kind of how I just got into it. It was always thinking in my mind. And yeah, it just never left. I I told myself that I need to do this or else I'm going to regret like not even trying it at all. Now, most people, as you know, who do like professional wrestling or they do like you know, some type of like combat sport, uh, they still transition themselves into like the Hollywood uh, world do you still want to like picture yourself doing stunt work or are you just happy uh with the like with the the career path you're going into right now 
I'm open to doing stunt work. Um, a few of my instructors that like actually taught me in Taekwondo, they're doing stunt work in movies, like a good mm -hmm. handful of them. And one of them recently approached me about it because he saw what I was doing now. Cause he hasn't seen me since I was like 13 <laughs> and then he saw what I was doing now. And he asked me if I was interested and I let him know. So right now that, you know, that whole thing is kind of up in the air as far as like, if I'll kind of get into it, but I, I'm definitely open to it. Oh right, man. And you know what? Now I'm going to be like, I'm going to be that person. I'm going to be looking on TV because I've, I've noticed certain people that I see either I know them personally or I see them in like, you know, um, in professional wrestling. And I'd be like, wait a minute, this person looks familiar. And I look and be like, oh, it's such and such from, you know, whatever company. So definitely going to look out for you on, on, on that note. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but with, with, with martial arts, right? Um, Tell me a little bit about like what what made you fall in love with martial arts? Um I think what it was is just like how intense like it was watching it. I love mm. for some reason I love seeing like combat sports like something when it comes to a one-on-one -on -one type deal like this person versus this person, like the good person versus a bad person or something like that like intrigues me and I don't know what it was exactly that got me into Taekwondo because I was the first one that I started with. Mm -hmm. I think it was just based off like a couple pictures that I saw um, off of like this advertisement. And it was like a picture of a guy that was doing like a big kick in the air. And I thought that was pretty cool. Just anything that's just like out of this world looking like very intense, like that captivates my attention and so i was very um interested in seeing like what it was and how i can get into it no i mean i've seen so many people like now I, like i have two small boys right and they wanted to get into martial arts but they wanted to get into the martial arts like the wrong kind of thing they saw cobra kai and it was just like that's what i want to do and i'm yeah. just like yeah like like, do you do you are you sure there's something you want to do? I took them to a class, they didn't like it, and it was like, no, we just want to do this stuff that's on TV. <laughs> so well, yeah, to be honest, like I was six years old though, so I kind of had that mentality too. It was mm -hmm. like, oh, that's so cool. How do I want to do that? Like right. that's exactly how it was. Oh my god. <laughs> how how is life? Because you're such a busy person when it comes to pro wrestling. How is life on the road? It's crazy. I try to make it as comfortable as possible for myself because it mm -hmm. can definitely get uncomfortable. Like you have to make sure that you are, you know, completely healthy mm -hmm. as a whole. Like your body's healthy, like your health, everything when you're traveling because you never know. Um, I try to make sure that I'm at least taking care of myself throughout the week because the weekends, mm -hmm. of course, is, are the shows. So I'm trying to be more smart about what I'm doing during the week and making sure that I'm resting and recovering so that when Friday comes along, I'm like well recovered and ready to go. Um, but life on the road is just, yeah, it's just been really crazy. Um, a lot of the time it is like I'm in a car. Um, lately, it's been like a little bit of both flying and um, road trips, mm -hmm. but um, I do enjoy them. But I do, again, I do make sure that I am comfortable <laughs> or like along the way. Um, but yeah, it's it's fun for the most part. I'm typically I'm not traveling alone. Mm -hmm. I usually travel with Yoya. I don't know if you're familiar with him. Yeah, but, mm -hmm. um, I usually travel with him. And I travel a lot with Trisha Dora too, because she lives in DC. So okay. usually when we are booked on the same show, we travel together. Any horror stories from being on the road or flying? Huh. You know what? I haven't had anything too too bad, to be honest. Like I thought recently something was gonna happen in these airports, but no, mm -hmm. I've been having a lot of luck with it, to be honest. Oh, I've lucky. heard I've heard people like saying that their their flight was canceled mm -hmm. like they lost their luggage like their gear and so if anything i've been making sure that i had my carry-on like my gear in my carry-on mm -hmm. for the most part and then if i need to check in a bag it's just other stuff i don't mind losing in a sense um but yeah nothing too bad <laughs> now you said your mom 
took you to a wrestling school? Has she seen any of your matches? So for like being there live and watching her baby get into a ring and basically fight another person. Cause the way your style is, if somebody didn't know about professional wrestling and I put them in, in front of you and let them watch one of your matches, they literally would think like you guys hate each other and you guys are just completely want to beat the living shit out of each other. So like, how does your mom and your family feel about you still pursuing this dream of professional wrestling? Um, well, my mom, she knew that I always wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. And she knew that I was basically made to do this. Like she always tells me. And so she's seen me, she's seen me in the ring and she's seen my matches in person. Um, she tries to go to like, cause I've been going to Jersey a lot. So she mm -hmm. tries to make the Jersey shows. Right. So um, she has made a couple of them and she's seen me in the ring and she's always posting about it and showing her friends. So she's very supportive about that. My dad as well. Cause my dad is kind of the person who showed me wrestling because I was mm -hmm. watching wrestling with him and going to the live events. Um, so yeah, he's definitely very supportive and always asking me for updates. He's like, what's happening now? Like <laughs> what, what's going on with your career? What's the upgrade? What's right. going on? What's the info? Let me know about anything, like any updates on this, that, or the other. So yeah, he's, he's very much into it and supports oh. me. I know he was, I know he must've been super excited when he saw you on AEW. No, oh, yeah, he definitely wanted to know when I was going back. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> I was like, I'm not sure. It was just that one time. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. <laughs> oh man, I've I've talked to so many fans that um, are into like the like indie scene of of pro wrestling, and when I start to make a list of people that I want to have like conversations with, um, like your name came up so many times, and they. And I will always ask, like, I knew my reasons why I was such a fan of yours because it's just your style and your look was so unique compared to like everyone else that I that I was seeing, you know, that I would see at, at shows, you know, and everybody would say the same thing. So, like, how does that feel to like that you're seeing like more and more your work is being recognized throughout the uh, throughout pro wrestling and like people want to um, see you more? Um, well, that honestly means a lot to me because that's basically my goal is to showcase my style because I'm well aware that it is different. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've heard different things here and there throughout like my career already. And I've only been wrestling for five years, mm -hmm. but like I've heard different people say like, oh, like you need to do more wrestling, not so much martial arts, like. And I get what they were saying, but at mm -hmm. the same time, I was, I am wrestling. <laughs> like, right. you're not just, you're really not paying attention to it. And you're not looking at the art aspect of it. Because um, I'm implementing, like, my martial arts and I'm implementing, like, the wrestling moves, like, the chaining, like, grappling as well. So I know I do kick a lot and everything. And, you know, people love it. And I know they do because um, mm -hmm. they let me know. And so, and it's just, this is something that I'm comfortable with. So I always tell myself to wrestle the way that you know you're made to wrestle and that you're comfortable with and that you know you can do really well and this mm -hmm. is what i can do really well i'm not going to switch it up just because of one person not you know liking the style there's always going to be a certain group of people in wrestling that are going to like that type of style or want to see more of that or they always been looking forward to seeing someone like you so i always try to keep that in mind yeah i mean definitely don't ever change your style. I think that's one of the that's one of the main things that we love about about you is like your your style of work. And anytime that you are in the the New York area and you're always doing a show, I always try to sponsor people that that I'm really, you know, big fans of. So people already know like when you're on the card, I always sponsor you. So you know like promoters will come to me like, hey your girl's gonna be on there. You're gonna you're gonna sponsor her I'm like yeah, you already know. So <laughs> def definitely keep up the, that. you know, keep up the great work with that. Um, you know, like women's wrestling has been um, on a, on a really like an all time high. We've seen yeah. from like the main stage to like, like the lower cards, you know, um, like, what do you think is missing? Like, what do you want to see in like women's, like in the women's division when it comes to professional wrestling in a whole? Hmm, that's a good question because I feel like, yes, right now with women's wrestling, it's booming and we are, you know, getting out there a lot more and trying new things. Like, for example, 
Um, I've been wrestling at Women's Wrestling Army where Maria mm-hmm. Canellas, she runs that promotion. And she's just, oh my gosh, she's been doing so much with us. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. The way that she's working with us individually and trying to help us upgrade ourselves in some way and to, you know, basically grow. It's amazing. And she tries to do that in ways where like we do like backstage interviews or like just anything behind the scenes, trying to make people know like, hey, women's wrestling is it. Like it's interesting. It's intriguing. There's so many different women out there with different styles. And so I I just want to see more of that. I want to see more of like the emphasis on the different styles that woman women's wrestling can bring. Um because there's just so much like a lot of people are just not seeing and so that's what i want to see more of so is there any is there anybody you haven't wrestled yet that you want to step into the ring with um hmm. i've i've been saying this for a while it's not a particular person but it's a particular styled wrestler Mm-hmm. I want to wrestle more lucha, okay, um, just to test myself. Because mm-hmm. um, I've, I mean, it's not a bad thing, but I've been paired up with a lot of people who might have like a martial arts background or some sort of like hard hitting style, which is fine. Mm-hmm. Like I understand why. I just haven't been tested enough mm-hmm. to where, like, if I'm going against someone that's lucha. How would someone of my style react to their move? So I just want to wrestle someone of like lucha style. Okay. I mean, I could I could definitely see that because like mixing in the like your martial arts background with somebody who's mostly, you know, using the ropes a lot of the time and yeah. Going, yeah that, that definitely would be a, a really great match to see, especially to see like exactly how would this end up because i i don't i think personally i don't think it would end in a in a pinfall it'll be more in a, a, a submission than anything else or you guys are just gonna knock each other out either way i'll be entertained just like everyone else is yeah um, you know um one one thing i wanted to actually i'm really big on mental health right mm-hmm. and i know for all of us depending on whatever the job is uh it could take a toll on us and there's most days where we probably don't want to get up in the morning and go on a, you know, drive to wherever or fly mm-hmm. here or go for this show or go to work. So mm-hmm. uh, on days where you just don't feel like, like you just want to sit in your couch and do absolutely nothing, but you know that you have to uh, get up and go. Like, what do you, what is, what is the motivation for yourself to like, to push through it? Um, well, throughout the week while I'm like resting and recovering, I also study like tape study matches Mm -hmm. and I try to come up with like new things for myself, like even little things to do in the ring or to add to my gear or to add to my entrance. Um, I try to think of something like that to kind of motivate me to want to like, you know, go to Mm -hmm. wherever so that I can like feel like I'm growing in some sense rather than thinking it's just repetitive and like, Oh, here's another day of this. Like, Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of how I just motivate myself. Okay. Oh man, that's good. As Mm -hmm. a fix, I have, we were, we're wrapping up here now. I have some just really quick rapid fire questions to ask you. Mm -hmm. First thing that you think of, just spit it out. Right. Yeah. Favorite city to wrestle in New Jersey. All right. You said so not, not city, but that's not a city, yeah. but you know what I mean. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I like going to Atlantic City. Favorite, Atlantic you, city. you know, we could just say favorite place to wrestle. <laughs> you could say Jersey. Jersey. Atlantic yeah. City, though, is fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, dream match besides Lucha. Well, Lucha, you have the Lucha style, but who will be your, your dream like match to do Lucha with? Oh, okay. Dream match to do lucha with. See, I haven't even thought of who exactly, mm. like dream match wise. Like, mm-hmm. there's a few girls I can think of that are lucha here, like a few girls in Texas, but 
Um, I don't know dream match wise, but I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> go go to snack. <laughs> um, I do like kettle chips. Okay. <laughs> like I I would eat those nonstop. I don't know. Mm. It's just like the crispiness of them. <laughs> okay. Yeah. What's that one song that gets you hyped? Anything by the Suicide Boys. Okay. Yeah, because I walk out to them like they're one of like um, the artists that I walk out to. All right. If you can give one piece of advice to a young up and coming talent, what would it be? To be yourself, because that's the the best way that you're gonna wrestle. <laughs> Good advice. Well, Janai, thank you so much for taking the time out and uh, speaking with me. It's been great. Uh, for people who want to catch you or maybe want to know more about you, where can they uh, where can they catch you at? Um, Instagram or Twitter, uh, Patreon. Uh, but Instagram and Twitter is Janai underscore Kai. And then Patreon is patreon.com slash Janai Kai. All right, guys. Well, you... You've heard it here. You know where to catch her. Uh, my guest was Janai Kai. Guys, remember, we're in the holiday season. So uh, let's let's get into the wallets there a little bit. Let's go over to Ringside Collectibles. Use the code word, the call up. That will save you 10%. They have a big giveaway uh, of, of deals going on right now. Um, we have the annual toy drive from the Fit Cave that's going on. That's going to help a lot of kids in the uh, inner city and also in the shelter system. You know, I'm really big on that. So let's let's come together. Let's put some smiles on these kids' faces for the holiday season. And guys, until next time, remember that you are the producer, you are the writer, you are the director, and you are the star of your own world. Continue to push, continue to dream, and don't let anyone stop you. Guys, until next time, I will be talking to you.